Hey everybody, uh, this is Dan Strong with Excel VBA is Fun. In this lesson, I want to go over um, using a list box, using a scroll, using your mouse's scroll wheel, just like you can right here. You know, I'm using the scroll wheel going up and down, but when you're using a list box or a combo box, typically you can't do that. I'm not going to take much credit for this. Um, there is a gentleman online, and I'm going to go to the blog right now. And his name was is Peter Thornton, um, but uh, I don't believe he's posted this on YouTube and shown its functionality. So I'm giving full credit to him. Uh, this is a beautiful uh, code that he wrote here. I'm basically going to copy and paste that. First, we want to go ahead and first things first. I'm going to go ahead and name this list. You may already have these, but in the names box, I'm going to name this list my list. Then I'm going to very simply almost cheating. Uh, Alt F11 is how you get to, to the Visual Basic Editor. I'm going to open a user form using this. And very quickly I'm going to expand it and I'm going to open uh, I'm going to put a list box right here. And make it sizable here. And we'll just have a one column list box for the time being. Actually, I'm going to make it pretty short because I want it to have a scroll bar. So we have to scroll up and down. And I'm going to name it LBX for list box. Uh, my list. Simple enough. Now, when this user form opens, I double clicked. I want to do a user form initialize sequence here. And I'll de delete the click one here. Um, no, I won't. Normally I do. I'm just going to cheat and use the row source. Row source. Well, maybe row sources for combo boxes. Let's see. I'm sorry. Typically I will add an item using code. And I'm wanting to speed this up. It seems like I'm slowing it down. Let's see here. Okay, I have to click on the list box, and I do want to use row source. It is my uh, list, so if I hit enter, it immediately fills even before the, the even before the user form is opened up like this. So there's your list. Um, I'll scrunch this down, I suppose, since it's so small. Um, so we have a list here. Um, I'm going to add a few more things here. No, I'm not. I'm just going to scrunch this to where you have to use the scroll bar here. I take it back. I am going to uh, right click and hit the letter I. And I'm going to just add a few more entries. Okay. Now we're good to go. So this list should have already expanded. If it hasn't, just need to double click on something else. And or maybe we need to reinitialize the row source. My list. And my list is, yep, that's right. Okay, well, I'll just close this and reopen it. Okay, I'm going to hit F5. Okay, when it loads, it actually gets its crap together. So that's good. Alright, so we have at least have something to scroll up and down with. So here's where the, the guy's code comes into play. I'm going to go back to his website, which I will list here. Um, and we're going to copy the stuff that says normal module code into a module. So I'm going to click here and go to module. And we can name this uh, scroll wheel. No spaces. We'll just copy all this stuff. We'll, we can study all of it, what it means in a little bit. Um, honestly, I haven't taken much time to look at it too thoroughly because I know it works. I did look at it because I wanted to tweak it and we'll go over that in a little bit. Here's the end of the normal module code. I'm going to copy that. We'll just paste it here in a module. Control V to paste. So it's a bunch of separate different um, 
procedures here. But they all work together. I think this one must take into account what your scroll wheel is doing. It, it has an API call, so it is calling onto Windows uh, for some help because Excel doesn't naturally have uh, scroll wheel commands built into its Visual Basic. So it's uh, so that's pretty awesome. Um, the main thing that you want to see here is that this uh, procedure called hook list box scroll is uh, it takes into account firstly the form you put the form name and then a comma and then the control name that's how it reads it and then unhook list box scroll happens whenever you close the user form or whenever there's an error it will also do that so um so it'll unload it so it doesn't screw up your computer or your it doesn't enclose Excel but they worked out all the bugs so uh, it's pretty sweet next thing I want to show you is in this uh, this function called mouse pros he has uh, what I figured out is basically this IDX he's placed as either being negative one or it is equal to one so if the the scroll wheel is scrolling upward then it is uh, must be less than zero uh, because if it's greater than zero they want it to be negative one anyway you can change that to whatever you want but uh, it is a good recommendation just leave it at negative one and one and uh, this list index is what it does it it takes the list index meaning your selection in the list and it either increases it it adds negative one or positive one depending on what the uh, mouse scrolling up or down so it adds that negative one or positive one to the current list index and I'm going to show you how to tweak that a little bit to where you can just scroll using the scroll wheel without affecting the selection um, so we'll go over that in a second hopefully you're not overwhelmed but uh, I promise you we'll have an example and it's not that bad so uh, the second part of the code is the user form part and basically he has three examples if you have a combo box called combo box one you do the mouse move event and you just for any of these you just type in hook list box scroll space me meaning the user form name it's always me if you're within that user form otherwise use the actual user form name comma me dot combo box one which is the name of the current control same with list box one or list box two you just do that with me comma me dot list box two or list box one depending on so uh, we can actually do this one ourselves but you do want to include this this is a user form query close that is uh, something that an event that happens whenever you click the little red X right there whenever you close a user form that a query close is what you want to use to do some commands whenever your user form is closing and in this case we want the unhook list box scroll to run so we do need to copy that part over so control C go ahead and copy that into this particular user form and put the query close uh, command there so it'll run that macro or that's procedure uh, the second thing we want to do is we want to double click on this list box and we want to do a mouse move event and if you can remember the name I'm gonna peek but I think it was um, it was just hook list box scroll and that will actually call that procedure you can also say call hook list box scroll but it's unnecessary unless there's multiple ones uh, so that's it uh, we okay we do want to put the form See here, put the form as an object, so the name of that form. Uh, we could say user form one because that's the current form we're in, but I'm just going to cheat and say me because we're in that user form. And the control we want is me.lbx, uh, my list. Okay, so I'm going to hit tab. We're done. Well, let's try that out. I'm going to uh, save this document. Hold on. Okay, we're good. Actually, that just went into our shared Dropbox folder. So if you're, if you have um, linked that Dropbox folder onto your Dropbox, you should have just received a new workbook because I just saved it.
Anyway, it's not done, but you know, hey, whatever. It's yours to play around with. So I encourage you to subscribe to that. It is free. Um, you can click on my Dropbox link in my video on Dropbox. Uh, but uh, let's go ahead and test this. I'm going to hit F5. Okay. So uh, if I, I'm using the scroll wheel right now, but it only works if my mouse is over this list box. That's the mouse move event. It happens when you're over there. So let's try it. Oh, I just I'm scrolling with my with my uh, mouse wheel here. So it seems to be working. So that's pretty cool. Now, if you have an event that happens every time a selection changes, that does a whole lot. Let's say it goes through like a hundred thousand records each time you click somewhere else to find results or do a huge sum product or something for your labels. You may not want that to happen. You may just want this little scroll bar to go up and down like in a normal Windows program but not necessarily for the selection to change as you're scrolling. That's where I figured out this next part. So, uh, yeah, go ahead and uh, click on this link that we're showing you now, and that'll take you to the next part. Thank you.